many of our leaders, many of the experts from many countries have come together to really think about the challenges of our society. What they've done is define 17 sustainable development goals. What I'd like to do is talk to you about number seven. It's about access to affordable, reliable, sustainable and modern energy for everyone. What does that really mean? Well, it's about efficiency. It's about access to low carbon dioxide generating capacity. And it's really about how we transmit those energies over large distances, but also over short distances. In other words, it's about being smarter. I'm a research scientist and engineer. That means I work on new problems. I want to discover new ways of thinking about energy systems. I want to make it even more reliable and even safer. The thing is, when I do research, it means that I don't expect necessarily the answer that I thought I would get in the first place. It's really exciting, but it's uncertain. And I think really the way that we will look at goal seven is going to be similar. We might think we're going to address it in one way, but we'll find different solutions. Hopefully we'll find even better solutions that we weren't expecting. It's going to be exciting, but it will also be frustrating. We're on a journey and we're on a journey together. So goal number seven is going to require our best efforts. But in fact, there's more to it than just doing research. If in the communique of the 2030 Agenda, it was recognised that each country faces specific challenges in order to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. And energy is very much in that category. Why? Well, first of all, different countries have access to different resources. They also have different weather patterns, which means there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Of course, Having different weather patterns, having different resources, doesn't mean that what we learn for one country isn't transferable to another country. In fact, sharing these ideas, sharing our development, is crucial to achieving the goals. But we have to do this in a culturally sensitive manner. We don't just plant technologies in different countries, we think and talk about them with each other, and then we plant the right kind of technologies. So let's think at the beginning now what we use energy for. We use energy in three different ways. We use it to generate electricity, we use it for heat generation, and we use it for transport. And that's both for industrial processes as well as domestic processes. Now, globally, when we split the thing up, we can see that about half of the energy that's then used is used for industrial processes. About a quarter of it is used for transport and the other quarter is for where we live and where we work, domestic processes, turning the lights on at night and heating our houses, that sort of thing. But you can see that quite a lot of those uses are not to do with electricity, such as transport, or at least not yet. But now we're starting to see how changes in technology will change that balance. Furthermore, remember that that's a global average and different countries use electricity, use energy in different ways. Now let's think about where that energy comes from. Well, at the moment, and again, this is a global average, about 30% of our energy is generated from coal, about a quarter of it from gas, and about a third of it from oil. And when we add those up, that means 75% of our energy use is through hydrocarbons. Actually, only about 4% of our energy is from nuclear, and only about 7% from hydro. And the reason for that is both of those are used exclusively to generate electricity. And remember that our total energy use, only about a quarter of it, is actually electricity. Now, I'm afraid that at the moment, that leaves only 2% for renewables. Now, those values we could argue about all day, and different people will put different balances on those terms. But I think the overall message is very, very clear. And that is, for the last 180 years, our economies have been dependent on hydrocarbons, and they still are. Now, we know that hydrocarbons are a finite resource. And again, we could argue about how much 
there is left in the world and, and discovering new deposits and so on and so forth. But I'm sure that in a hundred years' time, people will look back and wonder what on earth we were doing. In terms of the Sustainable Energy Development Goals, this means that hydrocarbons just don't tick the sustainable box. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think that hydrocarbons are something that we should stop using altogether. They're a very valuable resource. But to me, as a sort of industrial chemistry point of view, it seems strange that we use them to generate, generate energy and move them down in the process. We should be moving them up, as we do for a proportion, to make things like plastics and pharmaceuticals and rubber products. There, we are using them in a much more um, long-term position, and also those products we can use again and again. It's still not sustainable, but it's a lot more long-term than it would be if we only use them to generate energy. So on the basis of those chemical processes that we've talked about so far, it's already clear that we're going to have to reduce our use of hydrocarbons. And by the way, we haven't even started talking about the effect of CO2 generation on climate. That's another issue that also plays to this. The other issue is that developed and developing nations have a discussion here. Developed nations have been using those hydrocarbons, as we mentioned, for 180 years. Nations that are now developing look at that and say, well, we need to use them as well. So we need a discussion about how we're going to manage the use of these hydrocarbons and, I hope, reduce them, but reduce them together, in a sustainable manner, together. Now I think there are three key opportunities as to how we can reduce our use of hydrocarbons. And again, the key issue is that we share these technologies and develop these technologies together. So they are, one, energy efficiency, two, the development of new, low CO2 emitting, non-hydrocarbon energy capacities, and third, learning how to make better use of the energy that we produce in terms of its movement around and between our different countries. That includes, for example, a much talked about smart grids. But remember, when we talk about smart grids, we're talking specifically again about electricity. And remember, only a quarter of our energy use is to do with electricity. So there are lots and lots of technologies we're going to use here. Some of them will be to do with electricity, some heat, and some transport. It starts to become quite a complicated portfolio of different activities. So there are many research challenges. I mean, if we think about energy efficiency for a moment, and we think about how that would be implemented in our homes, we're all putting in double, triple glazing, we're thinking about insulating our lofts, we're all doing that sort of stuff in the UK because that makes sense to our energy needs and the way that we use energy in our domestic circumstances in the UK. But that doesn't mean that it transfers to a developing country where actually they're interested in staying cool, not warm. But some of those techniques and some of the mechanisms by which we balance our needs can be transferred. What I'm talking about here is a, a whole engineering approach, a systems approach to thinking about the problem. Now, we can share those systems approaches and we can share the way that we understand the balances between the use of energy and the generation of energy. And that's going to allow us also to use systems to transfer energy between our different countries. That's really exciting, it's really challenging, and with the use of computer simulation that we have at the moment, I really think we are on the verge of quite a dramatic change in the way that we run our energy systems. But I'm afraid we're back to the issue of pragmatism in research. Remember, the trouble with research, while it's very exciting, is it keeps telling you things you weren't expecting, and it doesn't necessarily give the answers to the problems that you thought would be tractable and straightforward. That means, going forward, we will start to share ideas, yes, but they won't necessarily be the ideas and solutions that we thought we would have in the first place. So, by talking, by sharing, it means that we will get to a solution, we will develop sustainable modern energy systems, but I don't necessarily think we know what those modern systems will look like. 
that's fine. I actually think we will get to where we need to get to. So let's conclude by going back to the definition of sustainable development goal number seven. Affordable, reliable, sustainable, modern energy for everyone. How are we going to achieve that? Well, actually through a systems engineering approach, which is culturally sensitive, so that we understand what different countries need and how they can share those different resources. There's a collage of different types of technologies that we're going to be using. But there's one thing that's absolutely for certain, and that is the types of technologies, the way that we use them, are not going to be quite the way that we think at the moment they will be. I think that's exciting.